Hi, I'm Bill Allward. Um, this is Little Mountain Ranch and Garden in Fort Calhoun, Nebraska. We're going to give you a little tour today of what all the items that we produce on this farm. Um, we're a diversified farm, chemical-free farm. Uh, we produce vegetables organically. We raise pigs in the woods. We do grass-fed beef. And we kind of do a, a whole variety of things in between. The goal of our farm is to be as sustainable as possible. We're also big proponents of putting health back in the soil. That's why we rotationally graze, we keep our pigs on the move, we're trying to fight back invasive species, um, trying to build up our pasture health to be not only an environment for our livestock, but wildlife as well. But yeah, follow us and we'll take a quick tour of what we have going on here at the farm. But the whole idea here is we feed grain morning and night at chores, but we don't have any feeders. We don't full feed all day. This is their feed back here. They're eating. We've got red oaks. We've got walnut. We've got all kinds of vegetation in here that pigs love. And so we want them to eat this and get kind of their basic mineral supplement from the feed. You can see these guys down here. They'll clear this whole area out. They'll eat the nettles. They'll eat about anything that has leaves on it. They're gonna eat a lot of the leftover acorn mass from last year. And then as fall arrives, we'll kind of, we'll hit this area one more time. I try to give it at least a few months rest, but we'll come back through here in the fall and start eating the acorns as they start to drop. Like mud. Yeah. yeah. So this is a group of recently weaned piglets. They're in what I would call um, piggy kindergarten, learning to respect the electric fence. I'm getting used to shifting every few days. So here in just probably this afternoon, I'm going to shift these guys slowly this direction, and they'll start heading towards the woods. But they eat a lot of grass and everything, but it's they need more than just grass. They need some grass. Protein, like yeah. nuts and other stuff. So one thing that we do in the summer months is we graze cows basically from the minute the grass turns green until we'll harvest these cows in the fall. We're going to hold on to them a little later if they, due to kind of COVID-19 and meatpacking craziness. We weren't able to get on the schedule until later. But um, the way we manage cows, is it's always evolving. Um, last year we did a lot more strip grazing focused cells, kind of broaden them out this year. And I, I think it works from a management perspective better for us. They've only they graze part of this one day and then they're going to graze to the other half. I just open it up for another day and then I'll keep moving them. Once they know what I'm doing, they start bellowing, waiting for me to move them. They're always anxious to keep moving. It's kind of in their natural instinct to keep moving. Late in the day like this, they like to find a good tree to lounge under and uh, loaf for the afternoon. But we've already seen huge improvements in the pasture health. I know it's benefiting the, the health of the pasture by rotating every day and moving. So we have a uh, solar uh, generation system. We've got 22 panels on the roof. Uh, we've also got a lithium ion backup battery. We've got most of our freezers to where if power goes out, they would stay on at least as long as the battery can stay running. But usually as long as we've got a clear day coming, the battery will charge up in about a couple hours. Once we hit about peak sun, it'll charge in less than an hour. Uh, one of the ways that we've been impacted by COVID-19 as livestock producers, meat producers, is you know, every basically every USDA inspected locker nearby is booked out you know, years in advance now. We could have easily tried to go up a bit in scale with livestock this year. The demand was there but we would have never been able to get them processed. I've always felt like the way we farm, we direct market, we're a bit immune to some of the larger scale agriculture ills, such as, you know, big four meat packers and things like that. Um, but yet we're still being impacted by it because when those large packers started going down in capacity, the small plants in the small towns in Nebraska picked up the slack and that, really affected small producers. I can't speak for the whole state, but I can say in eastern Nebraska, we need more USDA inspected plants, or at least state inspected plants. And to be able to market that, those products to the public without having to um, go to a USDA inspected facility, if 
if only state inspected as an option because the current laws would pro prohibit me from selling you know beef pork to the consumer unless it was a USDA inspected facility so being able to sell by the cut is is a big importance to a small producer like us so thanks for coming on a tour of our farm uh, we want to thank our sponsors Nebraska Communities United, Nebraska Sustainable Agriculture Society. Uh, we also want to thank the Broad the Regenerate Nebraska community for tuning in. Please follow us for future videos. There's going to be more tours coming out of, of all the cool farms and progressive things that are happening across the state.